What is it? You gotta open it and see. All right, I just clicked it. Oh, dude. You Why did you send is. me this? You know what oh it is. Oh my God, dude. PTSD right now. Yup. Damn, that was a bad one. That brings back terrible memories. That was a bad one, dude. Well, I suppose we should talk about ankles today then, huh? Let's, you know what? Let's just get into it. Let's get right into it. The ankle sprain 101 episode. Let's go. So in this video, we're going to teach you the necessary exercises to help you recover from an ankle sprain. So first off, we're going to show you how to regain your ankle mobility and flexibility, which is really important. And then we're going to show you the, the necessary strengthening exercises to get you back to skating. And then we're going to show you some good balance exercises that you can do to help get your balance and stability back. All right, so the first exercise, this is a dynamic calf stretch. This is gonna help get you back your ankle dorsiflexion range of motion. And you're gonna to wanna to feel the stretch in your calf and your ankle a little bit, and make sure you keep your back foot straight for this one. And then you're just stretching at three different directions. Outside, straight ahead, and then inside. Then another thing to think about is make sure your heel doesn't come up as you're stretching. And this is the this is the most mellow way to stretch out your calf and get back your dorsiflexion. What does dorsiflexion mean? That's that shin over toe range of motion. And this is another way that you can improve your ankle flexibility and get your range of motion back. And this is basically a kneeling dorsiflexion stretch. So you're in a lunge position and you're pushing the shin forward at different angles. And this one you'll feel in the calf a little bit. You might feel it in the ankle. And again, keep your heel down for this. You'll see me adjust that right here. And you can really push, you can see me helping Sibo out. Just push as, as much as you can, as long as it doesn't hurt. You can be aggressive with this one. So do you recommend a time limit for this one or just a certain number of reps? 30 to 60 seconds for that one. And that's daily, one to two times per day. And then the next level of stretching is you add a strap at the base of the ankle to make it a little bit more intense. So it's the same idea and you're kneeling on the strap to keep it secure. That's one way of keeping it secure. And then you're doing the exact same stretch and make sure that strap is nice and tight. And also make sure the strap isn't too high. So make sure it's right down there. It's below the ankle bones. And you can see how I have the strap folded in half just so it's not too wide. Keep those things in mind. And then if you have some sort of a post that you can lodge the strap into, that makes it even more secure. Then you can do the same thing. This is Sibo getting back his flick strength. So this one you're gonna wanna flick from in to out. And you're gonna do three sets until the outside or the, the shin muscles start burning. So you see he's controlling the motion on the way in and then he's flicking on the way out. And 
And then with this one, you want to flick without moving your leg too much. So you see how his knee is moving too much. Try to do, do it mostly with your ankle. If your leg moves a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but try to limit that. And then with this one, as long as it doesn't hurt, flick as hard as you can. Early on, you might have to ease into the intensity of the flick, but once it doesn't hurt, just flick as, as hard and, and uh, intensely as you can. So control on the way in and then really flick on the way out. And then after that, you can progress to doing flicks with both legs. You can see he's really controlling on the way in and then flicking on the way out as hard as he can. And then you can also work on speed. You can also do really rapid fire flicks. This one really gets the muscles burning. So it's three different levels of, of flicking. Flick with one foot, flick with both feet, and then you can do rapid fire flicks with both feet. Those are the three layers to this exercise. And you can do one at a time, or you can do all of these during a workout session. Now Sivo is going to work on flicking and jumping sideways at the same time. So he's hopping side to side, but he's trying to do the flick motion as he's hopping. Yeah, there's a real art to it, huh? There is. This one, this one takes a little bit of practice. Yeah. But just think about the flick motion that you were doing sitting down and do that as you step side to side. You can see this angle a little bit better. He's really getting that flick going. And you're going to feel this in the shins, but also in sort of the outside hip muscles. That's a good one. And then from there, you can progress to flicking, hopping to the side and rotating. Kind of like you're doing a, like a 180 type trick. So same idea, flick and jump, and then you're rotating. And this is three sets until fatigue. So I do those, those flicking exercises I do towards the end of the rehab, you know, later on in rehab, once the ankle is, is feeling pretty good. So you might want to wait a couple weeks to do those? Yeah, you might need to do like a week or two of just the sit down flicks before progressing to the, to the jump flicks. And then these balance exercises, I usually start close to the time when I do the uh, jump flicks, maybe a little bit before. So Sibo is just doing the pushing motion here while balancing. So this isn't something just to practice for the next one. You really, this is something you really have people doing. That's really what I have people doing. That's level one. So that's when their balance is, is not great coming back from an ankle sprain. So that's the first level. And then the second level, SIBO does it balancing on a, on a balanced disc. If you don't have one of these balanced discs at home, you can stack up a couple pillows, you can stack up a few towels. You're making an unstable surface and challenging your ankle to keep stability and balance as you're doing the pushing motion. SIBO's killing it right here. This is a tough one. And then the last one, Sibo's gonna be balancing, but he simultaneously, he's basically having to multitask. And you'll see him dropping the ball and having to drop and catch the ball while maintaining his balance. So he's basically dropping it and then he's trying to catch it as low as he can to the ground without losing his balance. And again, if you can't do it, on the balance disc. You can start by doing it just balancing on the floor. And I usually have my patients do about 10 drops on one leg, 10 drop, and then switch to the other leg, and then do two to three sets on each leg. And then these are a couple strengthening exercises that you can do 
up on your feet. So this is a single leg sit to stand to make sure you get your leg strength back after a, an ankle sprain. And this one's good too, because you kind of have to keep balance. Yeah. So make sure you keep your hands behind your back if you can to help make it a little more challenging for your balance. And then just keep that knee over your toe. Don't let that knee veer inwards. And what happens when the knee goes in? Why is that bad? It puts more stress on the, on the knee. And then sometimes it puts more stress on the ankle. At a very minimum, you should be able to do 22 in a row. I like to see my skaters be able to do 30. 30 sit to stands with the knee at 90 degrees, not having to catch your balance and keeping your hands behind your back. Then single leg heel raises is, is another really important exercise to, to do to get your ankle strength back. And three sets until fatigue for this one. And your goal is to be able to do, you should be able to do between 30 and 37 single leg heel raises at full height. So that's the goal. So those are the minimum strength requirements for my patients to be able to be cleared for skating after an ankle sprain. Right on. So does that cover everything you wanted to for the ankle sprain 101? Yep. That's a wrap for ankle rehab 101. Ankle sprains, dude. They're the worst. They are. <laughs> All right. So what are, what are some of the things we're going to talk about in the deep dive? We're going to talk more, more things ankle uh, sprain related. We'll talk more about the different types of ankle sprains. And then we're going to cool. talk about more how to manage those things in, uh, in more detail. So should be should be good. Right on. All right, well, let's get to it. I'm down. Let's go. All right. Peace out, everyone. Later. If you're a skater, then you know how often skateboarding injuries occur. Old Friends Fitness is run by skaters, for skaters, and is the online resource with all the content you need to stay healthy on a skateboard. Old Friends Fitness offers evidence-based information on the most common injuries that skaters face, including detailed exercise videos as well as in-depth podcasts, all designed to arm you with knowledge and keep you as strong and as healthy on a skateboard as possible. All right, so pretty much anyone who's stepped on a skateboard has probably sprained their ankle. I think of it as the most common, but how common would you say it is as a PT? You're absolutely right. There's no official data out there, but I think by far the ankle sprain is the most common injury in skating. What are the different types? Because I know there's so many different ways you can roll your ankle. The most common one is the one that we've all had where the ankle sprains sort of to the outside. It kind of folds to the outside, but there are two other sort of common ones. The other one is the medial ankle sprain, which is when it folds the opposite way. Um, and then you can have what's called a high ankle sprain, which is where the ankle kind of gets compressed sort of, and it, and it uh, tears or irritates some of the ligaments higher up in the ankle. And is that where we venture into hot pocket? territory or is that not really what you'd consider an ankle sprain slightly different okay slightly different you feel it in similar area but it's a it's a slightly different situation can you list them again so you have the lateral ankle sprain which is the most common one where the ankle folds to the outside you have the medial ankle sprain which is where it folds the other way and then you have the high ankle sprain why does it matter to know which kind you have the main reason is prognosis, meaning if you have a lateral ankle sprain, the most common one, you're probably going to heal within two to six weeks, depending on how severe the sprain is. But if you have that high ankle sprain, uh, it's going to take you longer to heal, more like the six to eight weeks, sometimes 12 weeks. So it just kind of helps you know like how long it's going to take to recover. That's the main difference. So healing time, like what you should be ready yep. for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly.
And how do you know if you've had a high ankle sprain since that sounds like kind of the worst one? Yeah, those are, those are kind of hard to diagnose on your own. Uh, that's a situation where you're going to have to go get it checked out by a medical professional uh, to get properly diagnosed. As a skater who knows a lot of skaters, everyone hates going to the doctor <laughs> or at least is scared of it. Yep. Ankle injury, like an ankle sprain sounds so common and like, yeah, whatever. It's not something that's necessary to see a doctor for. But when should you get an MRI or an x-ray or when should you see a doctor basically? I mean, sometimes you just use common sense. Like if you have a really severe ankle injury where the bone, you know, dislocates that, you know, when, when you see the displacement of the bone, then, you know, of course it's obvious, but in general, you want to keep an eye out for bone injuries or ankle fractures. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those aren't as easy to spot, but doctors and clinicians in the hospital use what we call the Ottawa ankle rules to to determine whether a patient needs to go get a scan, like an x-ray or an MRI, to check for a bone injury. And the Ottawa ankle rules basically consist of, all right, rule number one, you press on the outside of the ankle bone, and if that's really tender, go get an x-ray. And there's like four different bones that they press on, and if those areas are tender, then that's the situation where you go, you go get a scan and check for a fracture. The fifth one, the fifth ankle rule is if you can't walk more than four steps because you're in so much pain, if you literally can't take more than four steps, go get an x-ray. And that's something that skaters can easily sort of track. Like if you have a bad ankle injury and it's so bad that you can't, you literally can't walk, go get it checked out. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb. And so when you're talking about those four places to touch, that's something that you can self-diagnose as well? Yeah, that's something that you probably would have to have a doctor examine. Okay. But the areas that they examine are they press on the outside ankle bone, the inside ankle bone, the outside bone of the foot, and then there's one bone called the navicular on sort of the top and inside of the foot that they press on. And those are the tender areas to check for a fracture. Okay. So back to the average skater who's just rolled his ankle. The go-to move is to just ride it out, maybe do some rice, just chill. Is that wrong? What do you recommend? I think, I think all skaters recovering from an ankle sprain should be doing some sort of exercise, some sort of physical therapy. You don't need to go to a physical therapist, you know, three times a week for 12 weeks, but at least go, go get it checked out, get on a good exercise program and properly rehab it. I just see, I just see a lot of skaters that, you know, just kind of let it heal on its own, rush back into skating and re-injure their ankle. And then we're also seeing a lot of research that is showing that a lot of these sort of basic ankle sprains that everybody gets, they turn into long-term pain that can linger, you know, for months and even years after that initial ankle sprain. So if you're, if you take care of it sort of on the front end, it should help prevent those lingering symptoms. Okay. Just so my, you know, the layman skater in me who again, doesn't really understand what the ankle is made up of, like what is being strained it's the ligament on the outside like what is the injury yeah so there are a group of ligaments on for the most common ankle sprain that lateral ankle sprain there's a group of ligaments on the outside of the ankle that that get torn for the most part so they get torn but not enough to rip in half which is when when it's one of those ankle injuries that isn't a fracture but needs surgery is that correct yeah so with the ankle sprain they get torn but not completely like severed and severing how common is that it's rare that's really rare that requires like flying off a four-story building or something like that like just so much trauma that it rips or can someone just have really weak ligaments i mean you can have ligaments that are more susceptible to injury but I mean, a ligament tear or a ligament injury that requires surgery is one that's, I, I just imagine the ankle just like folding upside down. So those ligaments get really stretched, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it happens, but it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more uncommon. So it's not the direction you go in when you said you keep spraining, you keep spraining, like it's, you don't do the right recovery. So then you are more susceptible afterwards. That's not the end result it's more of just a, a constant issue i mean it can go both ways like you can just repeat the ankle sprain so many times and not take care of it that those ligaments gradually get worn away 
to the point where they don't stabilize your ankle. And sometimes that reoccurring situation can end up in surgery. But a lot of times, or other times, you can just have a really severe, like one-time traumatic ankle injury where they need to go in there and repair the ligaments. So it can go both ways. Okay. So I've just tried a front side flip off a building. <laughs> My foot missed the front, the typical, Ooh. boom, rolls it. What do I want to do? It's swollen up. I got like a baseball on the side of my ankle. What's the first move? And you've ruled out the fracture? And yeah, it's, I, I know it's not a fracture. I can take steps. I've had my doctor friend touch on the right bones. Uh huh. <laughs> what do I do? First off, I recommend what a lot of us have heard about, the RICE um, acronym. So rest, ice, compression, elevation. A lot of people just ice. There's been quite a bit of evidence that shows fairly conclusively that ice alone doesn't really do that much. So you got to do the ice and compression and elevation for it to actually do something. That's what I recommend early on just to help with the swelling and to help kind of expedite that healing for the first few days, like the first three to seven days, depending on how bad the injury is. And how much time do you want to cycle? For the ice? Yeah, I feel like this is one that you hear very different answers to. Yeah, 15 to 20 minutes. And like ice bucket or strap bag of peas around your ankle? Make it really cold, but the when you do the ice bucket, you're not able to do the elevation part. Mm. So I would try to find a way where you can get some crushed ice wrapped pretty tightly around the ankle. So you got the ice and the compression, and then you elevate that ankle. So you basically lie down on the couch and then elevate that ankle above your heart. Okay. So that's the first two days and I'm not really walking on it or should I be bearing some weight? That's a good question. You can walk on it a little bit, but just don't overdo it. So the first few days, I just kind of let, let things calm down. Do the ice and compression treatment. You can walk on it a little bit. Sometimes I have my patients do just very gentle movements like ankle pumps and ankle circles where they're moving the ankle a little bit, but not really aggressively. So I do little things like that, but like early on, just, just let it chill, let it heal. Okay. And then as it's still swollen and we're getting into like the week after two week after, I know there's a lot of people who will spend money on things like ultrasound and laser therapy and acupuncture. Like how effective are these things? Yeah, this is where I see skaters spend a bunch of money where they might not necessarily have to. There's there's a little bit of evidence for acupuncture. They've done a bunch of research uh -huh. on acupuncture for ankle injuries, and it's kind of inconclusive how helpful it is. It might help with pain a little bit, but it's probably not okay. going to help with much else, like swelling and healing and all that other stuff. But that's still debatable, so you can do that. Yeah. Just don't spend a lot of money on it. But things like ultrasound and lasers, some of those modalities, those probably aren't much more than a placebo effect. Really? Yeah. So I, I don't, you know, if, if a patient of mine just swears by ultrasound or swears by laser, I'll have them do it just to, you know, just to help them feel better. But it's really not doing much more than the placebo effect. What does the injured person think it's doing? I don't even understand how those work. I've never done them. And so I'm sort of ignorant to even the concept. You'll be surprised at what people tell patients some of these things are doing, helping with healing, helping with, you know, breaking down scar tissue. You know, they're sometimes sold a narrative on some of these modalities like ultrasound and laser that are just not true. <laughs> So I, I tell people, I mean, if you want to do that stuff, fine, but just know that it's probably not doing much more than, than a placebo effect. And please don't spend $100 at a fancy clinic paying for that shit. But what is it supposedly doing? Like, even if you're saying it's not effective based on what you understand and know, like I'm the one being told it's doing something. I'm, I'm sure this physician or whoever it is, isn't just telling me it's a, a magic wand that will just heal me. Like the theory behind the, the theory behind ultrasound is that the ultrasound wave gets, you know, gets beneath the surface and helps with inflammation and, and healing. And with the laser, the light from the laser does the same thing. So those are the theory behind, behind the two huh. things. Yeah. How did they go to market without any legitimate proof? 
Uh, I mean, you know, these theories start and they're they're safe enough to go to market. And then, you know, it takes time for the body of research to build. Yeah. But that whole time where that, that body of research and evidence is building, marketing happens and that yeah. happens fast. You yeah. know? So these narratives take off about how effective some of these like modalities are. Yeah. And a lot of times the way something's marketed doesn't really doesn't necessarily add up with how effective it is. So I, I always just, you know, after an ankle sprain, I tell just do do it the old fashioned way. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. You know, it's you can do it at home, it's somewhat effective and you don't have to spend any money. And then when do you get into some of the more involved rehab exercises we focus on in this video? Yeah, once you've sort of let it heal and you've been you know, doing the ice and elevation for a while, it's, it's kind of hard to say because every ankle injury is different and some recover a little bit quicker than others. Like if you have a minor ankle tweak, you know, you could be ready to do some of these exercises by day three. Mm -hmm. But if you have a real, if you have a really severe one, or if you have one of those high ankle sprains, it might take a week or two. Okay. So that's where it's nice to be able to go to a PT clinic and get some guidance on that. Yeah. But, you know, basically a few days to, to a week or two is, is sort of the window when you can start doing these things. What's the window of time that's dangerous for developing scar tissue? The longer you hold off, the harder it is to get back. There's not necessarily a window, but when, when, you're, when the ankle's starting to feel good and you can walk on it with not too much pain, that's when you can start trying to get your flexibility back. So I, I kind of try to have my patients ease into that right away. So early on, I focus on flexibility and then I build in strength and balance after that. The key motion to get back is what we call ankle dorsiflexion. And that's basically the motion where your knee is going over your toe as, as far as possible. That motion, can you picture that? Yeah, like it's coming towards my knee? Yeah, it's like your shin, uh, you know, moving over your your foot when the foot's on on the ground. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the most important one to get back. If you don't get that back over time, then that might put you at a higher risk factor for another ankle injury. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you want to get that dorsiflexion back. And that's sort of the first exercise that we have in the video, a couple ways to get that, that dorsiflexion mobility back. So we usually, we usually start with that. And then if that goes well, then we start gradually implementing some strengthening into the mix. And then we, we progress towards more of the, uh, the jumping and balance stuff once the skater can handle it. And for the exercises we have in this video, are they designed for the normal lateral ankle sprain? Or do you use these for the high ankle and medial ankle sprains as well? I use them for all the different types of sprains. Okay. But you just have to, depending on the type and severity of the sprain, the exercises are similar or the same, but you just, you know, ease into some of the exercises a little bit slower based on the type and severity of the, of the sprain. What's the downside of starting on some of these exercises too early? You irritate the ankle and then you're, you're, you slow down the, the healing process. Mm, so you could actually just like push your recovery time by a couple weeks if you started doing these too soon. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can, but you know, with an injury like this, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward with each of these exercises, you know, you ease into it and if it feels okay, and then you, you keep going. The only time you're going to get in trouble is if you, if you try an exercise, it hurts. And then you just keep pushing through mm. into pain, into pain, into pain. You keep poking at it. That's when it backfires on you. And when do you want to, when do you know it's the right time to start with the ones we have in this video? Yeah, you'll see some of the exercises are easier than others. And we sort of have an order in the video of easy to more challenging. So you start with the easy stuff. You start with the dorsiflexion mobility. Uh, you work on that. And then you can start with, you know, the exercise where you're working on the flick strength sitting down. That goes well. Then you start doing some of the exercises where you're standing up, but you're not jumping. And then if that goes well, then you can do the balance and, and jumping stuff towards the end. So you just kind of gradually expose yourself to these little by little. And then once you get, you know, three, four weeks down the line and you're able to do all of these, the trick is to 
to stick with them. Like I recommend with all of my skaters that see me in the clinic, uh, recovering from a, an ankle sprain, do these exercises for six, seven, eight weeks, sometimes three months. Even when you're like back skating already, you still should be building your strength and flexibility and, and balance. So these don't keep reoccurring. So it's, it's important to stick with these. So what about if you've had, if it's been like, years since a bad ankle sprain but it was really bad is it good to just do these as sort of a general workout routine that's what i always wonder absolutely yeah this is a perfect prevention program that you can do for your ankles if you've had ankle issues in the past oh i like that and so the most important question every skater who's listening to this probably wants to know is when can you get back to skating yeah, that's the that's the million dollar question, isn't it? If you're seeing me at the clinic, I put all my skaters through a series of return to sport tests. They're like different hop tests. They have to get a certain score on those tests to pass, and then I clear them based on how well they do. But obviously, not all skaters have access to physical therapists who put them through those tests. So you should have a certain level of strength in your in your ankle and in your leg to get back to skating and you should be able to do between 30 and 37 calf raises with no pain. You should be able to do at least 22 of the single leg sit to stands with no pain. So that's something you can kind of test on your own. And if those things line up and you're not having pain with those tests, you're not having pain with any of the exercises and it's been, you know, three, four or five weeks since the injury and the swellings come down quite a bit, then you can start, you know, testing it out a little bit, go push around and sort of ease your way back into, uh, to skating. And so I had that good day skating around. I can go back to that building. I tried to front side flip off and just try to get it. No, what? Walker. Come on, no. dude. I don't want it though. <laughs> no, like when, when I tell my, when I tell my skaters that they're quote unquote cleared for skating, that doesn't mean cleared to going back to that you know, 17 stair rail that you hurt your ankle on in the first place. <laughs> that means clear to ease back into skating. And that's one, I feel like skaters, including myself, especially in my younger age, that's one of the things that skaters are the worst at. Yeah. So just make sure you ease back into skating when you're coming back from an ankle sprain. Yeah. You know, do flat ground for a week or two. Mm -hmm. do ledge tricks for a week or two. If you like doing stairs, start on a two or three stair and then progress slowly. Just ease into stuff. And what about wearing a brace when you go skating? I feel like I've never really done that too much, but I've definitely seen it. Yeah. Actually, there's really good evidence that bracing does help in recovery and it helps in prevention. So huh. there, there is pretty good evidence for ankle braces being effective, but... I also know that from personal experiences and from, you know, skaters telling me, you know, when you wear a brace, your ankle feels limited and stiff and it can kind of mess with your, with your skating. Yeah. So with that in mind, I just really harp on just getting the ankle strong and flexible and stable, just spend extra work with doing that so that the skater feels sturdy enough where they, they don't even need a brace, but I tell them if, if they can find a brace that, that feels good, go for it. And what about weakening it in the long run? Does a brace kind of do that? I've always had that in my head that that's what can happen. Yeah, I mean, it could. But I would say if you wear a brace and don't get back to exercise or don't get back to skating and the ankle just kind of stays braced and sort of atrophies, yeah, that's a, that's a situation where the brace is harmful. Okay. But if the brace allows you to do what you want to do and have the ankle feel good, then it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily a crutch, but, but I wouldn't recommend using a brace forever. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to use it, use it while you're getting back into skating and you, you're getting your confidence back and then let your body and your muscles do the work after that. You're saying definitely don't use it as a way to get back on your board sooner without complimenting that recovery with these exercises, right? Exactly. Yeah. And if you are going to use a brace, don't use it forever. Have you ever used, have you ever used a brace? Not really. Like I feel like I've used a brace like ankle wrap because of not necessarily an ankle roll, but something else that was going on. Like I had a, um, the balls of my ankles had some injuries and it was more of like a guard against 
getting hit. I had like a really weird incident where I was coming around the corner of like a little newspaper stand kiosk and there was a sharp piece of metal jutting out that I didn't see. So when I turned, I just ran into it and my ankle swelled up like crazy. I don't, I don't know what it was, maybe a bone bruise or something, but it was extremely sensitive for the next like month. So I kind of used a, you know, how like a shin guard when you're playing soccer has like that bottom ankle strap. Yeah. It was like a pad almost to yeah. keep it from hitting yeah. that sensitive spot. Yeah. Yeah. I went through a period of time um, in my teenage years where I was spraining my ankles just all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. And I, and I remember the brace feeling good and helpful with basketball, but with skating, I don't know, maybe I just had the, the wrong brace. It just felt so restrictive, you know? Yeah. No, I feel that. Yeah, because if you think about it, you your ankles are in all sorts of funky positions when you when you skate. So yeah, it's nice to have that freedom. Do you think ankle injuries are more common in skateboarding than they are in basketball? Because I feel like that's pretty common with all of the quick, sudden change of direction movements. Yeah, my feeling is is that still in skateboarding, it's way more common. Yeah. And things like knee injuries and, you know, other areas are more susceptible to injury in basketball. Okay. Soccer was a bad, I think I had a bad ankle injury one time too. Yeah. Because you don't have that, you don't have much support there with the cleats. With the cleats and then you're changing directions really fast. And with soccer, you're, depending on how the nice the field is, sometimes those grassy fields can be uneven a little bit totally yeah the one question i feel like i didn't get a clear answer from you on was was this idea of scar tissue that i have a hard time understanding how does the scar tissue develop from an ankle injury scar tissue is is you know basically sometimes part of the uh part of the healing process and it helps kind of scar down the area that was affected and and it's just you know what happens after many times after an injury but sometimes that scar tissue can hinder flexibility Um, so you want to keep an eye on that and and make sure that the the injury area isn't so scarred down that it becomes really stiff so that's when you got to keep things even though things are still healing um, you gotta you gotta do certain movements and certain exercises to make sure uh, you don't lose your flexibility and so are you sort of fending off that scar tissue from forming? Yeah, or just making it less effective in forming so much that it that it causes stiffness. Yeah, because when I picture it, I picture it like this little nasty rock that forms that like gets in the way of your ankle moving. But I don't really understand it. I don't, I don't know if that's right, first off. And I've never dealt with it personally, but I hear it people talking about it a lot. So what do you do? First of all, like how off am I with that assessment? It's, it's, it's not, it's not that tough. I mean, if it was a rock, rocks don't move, you know? Okay. It's, it's a little more, it can be, it can be affected a little bit more easily than a tissue that is as hard as a rock. What do you mean by affected? Like you can break it down? Yeah. I mean, if it's, you know, if it's, if, if the scar tissue is, is causing stiffness, yeah, you can, sort of break it down to the point where it's not stiffening up the the area as much as it would if you did nothing. Okay. And so this exercise routine fends off that scar tissue in a way, right? It fends off this. It doesn't get rid of the scar tissue, but it, it makes the scar tissue less effective in causing stiffness in the area. Okay. So it fends off, sti- it fends off stiffness for the most part. Okay. Back to the video we have and kind of a general recap on ankle sprains. What can you tell us? Well, let me ask, before we recap everything, the key points, let me ask you another question. What was it like after that big ankle injury you had? Yeah. What, what was it like getting back on the board, you know, first getting back on the board after that? Did you have any challenges or was that? Was yeah, that... I mean, it was just painful. Like I just felt uh-huh. like a month and a half, you know, or the six weeks you sort of hear is normal, couldn't do anything with my ankle that I wanted to. You know, I wasn't even trying to get back into hucking my life away. I was just trying to skate comfortably and I couldn't. 
So it was more of a pain thing that that was kind of a, an issue or, or was it a stability fear thing that was an issue or a little bit of, or all of the above? I feel like it was pain and flexibility. Yeah. Well, now you can, now you have some exercises to do next time you hurt your ankle. Yeah. Or really I should be doing these more often just as a preventative. The last time I did a little ankle sprain, it was definitely some karma. I was on my honeymoon. We had just been uh -huh. married and we were going to Croatia, Whitney and I uh -huh. had it, but we had a stop over in Barcelona. And of course she's the best and was like, yeah, bring your board. And in Barcelona, I had enough time to like go down to Makba. And I just hadn't really been skating enough, I think. And of course I mm. ran into Amrit, the homie, from LA, he was there, you know, doesn't matter that we're halfway across the world. It's just like, oh yeah, what's up? Good to see you. And uh, he's like, dude, let me film you do a switch back step real quick. And I just folded it over the edge oh, and no. just was, I couldn't even put full weight on it the whole honeymoon. And I just felt like that's what, that's what I get for trying to skate on my honeymoon. I should have just been chilling. But yeah, it was, luckily it was only, I mean, it was probably a month before I really had anything back and it took a long time because it was, uh, wasn't the same ankle I did before before it was yeah. my right and my switch flips have have felt like they've been off ever uh, yeah. since yeah i always it's 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 always uh i always every skater i see who's had an ankle injury in the past i always ask them like how, how was it coming back from that ankle injury you know because a lot of i just see a lot of or i feel like a lot of skaters just think they should be able to tough out an ankle injury like on their own and come back like you know in a week or two yeah but like those first like if you're coming back and it's too soon like it's kind of scary like doing skating you know like I, I just think back on some of the ankle injuries that i came back from like I, I was coming back way too soon like i you know like like especially like you think like oh like the first when like when you roll your ankle the first thought that comes to your head is like oh is it my pop foot or is it my flick foot Mm -hmm. and oh it's not my flick foot so i could probably come back a little bit earlier you know be, you know like you just think yeah. of ways to like trick yourself into coming back like really soon from an ankle injury yeah don't rush it and what about that pain that i was having switch flipping like i knew it had been long enough i should have felt i should i felt like i should have had him back yet it was hurting to switch flip but really like bearing weight and other things wasn't painful should you just work through it sometime though should you tough it out yeah, I mean, if if you have if you're having pain with flicking like six months after an ankle injury, then that might be a situation where I would have you like tough it out a little bit with in a controlled environment, like have you do some flicking exercises that might be a little bit painful at first, but your your ankle adapts and gets gets used to them. So yeah, sometimes like if you're having symptoms that might be from like stiffness, like way down the line. That's a situation where I would have I would have someone tough out some pain with rehab exercises, and then hopefully that translates into not having to tough it out at a skate park. So in your in your case in your case, I'm not sure. I can't remember yeah. the details. I felt like you were kind of just. I mean, we'd go skating. And I'd be like, God, it still hurts, and you'd be kind of like, just keep just work through it, and. I would, and then it would kind of go away, which I found surprising. Yeah, yeah. So that might have been that might have been one of those situations where it's okay to push through a little bit of pain. Yeah. All right. So we've covered a lot here. What are the key points for a takeaway on ankle sprains? All right. Key points. So first off, immediately after you have an ankle injury, keep an eye out for bone injury, and if you can. Um, if you can't take more than, you know, four steps after an ankle sprain, go get an x-ray, go get it checked out. Next point is early on, don't be afraid to let it chill for a few days. Rest, ice, compression, elevation, just go easy on it for the first days. Let it heal. And then once it's healed enough, ease into all the exercises um, that we've outlined for you in the video. Um, focus on getting back that ankle dorsiflexion range of motion first, and then you can gradually build up strength and balance. And then next key point is once you're in a groove with the exercises, keep doing them, do them for at least six to eight weeks total, even when you're back on the board, 
And then last but not least, don't rush back into skating after an ankle sprain. Ease into it. It's not worth getting re-injured. And again, I feel like these numbers sort of just want to stick in your head, but like it's normal for two months after the initial injury to not be 100%. If it's a bad lateral ankle sprain, it's not uncommon to be feeling something two months after the injury. I feel like that's like good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Gives you a little reassurance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ankle, they're just, ankle sprains are weird, you know? I'll roll my ankle yeah. and have like a week recovery and then my friend will have two and a half months, you know? It's like, it's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody heals differently, but also every ankle injury is different and there are some gnarly ones in skateboarding, you know? Yeah. So just be, be patient. Don't force it. Yeah. One more question. How do you know if it's something that might require surgery? I mean, the short answer is go get a consultation from a surgeon. But in, in general, if you, are, if you have an ankle sprain, um, you've ruled out fracture early on, so you go the rehab route and you, you, know, you do all the exercises, you, you do all the rehab, and you know, four, five, six, seven months down the line, it's not better. Yeah. Um, that might be a situation where um, you go go check it out with a with an ankle uh, surgeon, and then the other situation where surgery might be um, warranted is if you have just repeated ankle sprains um, to the point where your ankle is unstable because the ligaments the ligaments aren't doing their job because they're so stretched out as far as keeping the ankle stable. That's yeah. another situation where I mean, if you're like walking. If you've had so many ankle sprains and your ankle's unstable to the point where you're rolling your ankle like stepping off of a curb, that's where you might need to go get a consultation with the surgeon. All right, well, that's all for this issue's deep dive. Thank you everyone for your membership. The support has been incredible. We're so pumped to keep this going. We hope you've been enjoying the content. Next up for this month, we have a catch up with Alexis Sablone, who's a great friend of mine, I've known her forever, one of my favorite skaters. And she's incredible. She's got so much going on this year and we dive into you know, her various video projects, the Olympics, and you know, we talk about a really gnarly ankle sprain that she's been dealing with and it's a good conversation. So I hope you enjoy it and thank you again. Also shout out as always to Bobby Renz for creating the music you're listening to and yeah, check back soon. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks.